Hey you guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. Before we hop into today's video, I have a really exciting announcement. I'm so, so, so excited to bring this to you guys. Last year, I was getting DMs from people saying they loved my free workouts on Instagram. Some of them are on YouTube, but if you've seen my Instagram, there's so many free workouts there. And I saw people like creating their own calendars of all of the free workouts, like Monday I'll do this one and Tuesday I'll do this one. And they get like thousands of saves. So I know people are using them, engaging with them. And so I just asked you guys, like, I just asked, I was like, you guys, what if I created a monthly calendar that organized all of Smalletics free workouts? Would you guys want that? Like, would you use it? Would it help you? And the response was crazy. I got so many messages and everyone was like unanimously like, yes, please, let's definitely do that. Every other day of 2019, I created a new workout for you guys to do. And now, today, I'm really excited to announce that I'm officially opening up membership to Smalletics Monthly Calendar Challenges. What this is, is all your favorite Smalletics workouts from YouTube and Instagram organized into a monthly program with daily workouts warm-ups, the workouts, cool downs, and rest day activities. And every single month has a theme because it's a challenge. So every month there's gonna be a theme. The theme for the month of April is going to be an at-home 30-day challenge. I am so excited about this because I asked you guys if you wanted it and everyone was so pumped for it. It's just gonna be such a great time. I'm just envisioning us all as a community doing this challenge together, doing the at-home workouts and sharing it on social and just getting stronger and staying accountable um, and holding each other's hand during this kind of crazy weird time where we're at home and don't have access to weight. So all the workouts in the month of April you can do from your house, either with at home weights or no weights at all, or you can you know, put soup cans in bags and use that, but it's super at home friendly. I thought that now was the best time to release this for you guys because it's super affordable. You know, Petite Power Program is a really, really focused high level coaching program. Whereas this is something that if you've already been doing the small next workouts, you'll love this and be able to use it and just take your workout to the next level and stay accountable. So it's literally less than a dollar a day. I really, really wanna welcome you guys to join as founding members because as a founding member, you will literally be grandfathered in at this price forever as a monthly subscription. You can cancel any time, but if you enroll in this period, you get to be a founding member of the Smallletics Monthly Calendar Challenges and get that special lower price forever, whereas it's gonna keep going up and this is the best time to get in now at like the ground level. So if you guys are excited about this, go to smallletics.com slash challenge or you can check the description link below. It's gonna be so fun and yeah, that's the announcement for today and now we will start the video. Hey you guys, what's up? And welcome back to my channel. We have Gary here. Oh, hi. We're gonna have to figure out how to do this with our height difference. <laughs> You're gonna have to walk like <laughs> 10 paces behind me. I'll walk here. So Gary and I are on a walk right now amidst um, the COVID-19 sort of self-quarantine phase in Brooklyn. And so we're just trying to get some nice fresh air. So I thought that I would sort of interview Gary on mindset because a lot of you guys might not know Gary is a former professional tennis player on the world circuit ATP he is a high performance tennis coach he also spent two years at West Point and he meditates every single day so he's really an expert in mindset and he knows so much about um, high performance mindset um, creating lasting lifestyle changes for your health um, and just becoming better and doing better and increasing your performance every day. So I thought we could chat with him about some of his philosophies and thoughts on performance for like daily life. Does that sound good? Sounds great. Now I need to come up with some questions. So how do you, how do you commit to meditating every day and do you have days where you just like don't want to do it? Yes to that last part. One of the big things for me is really believing that 1% better every day goes a long way and I really like to lead by example so I expect my players or I demand of my players that they meditate every day or work on their mental game. Both Gary right. and I like we obviously were athletes for our whole lives but now that we're not competing we have entered more of like a maintenance phase where we're, we don't have to perform at that high level so we're trying to find ways to bring high performance into our daily life. So I think that's you can apply that to everyday life like having that kind of growth mindset where you're trying to get better in 
whatever it is that you're doing. I work with young kids, but a lot of the things that I try to teach them, I hope that they'll take into their lives later on in life, right? Yeah. Like they, they're not, most of the kids that I work with, 99.9% .9 of the kids that I work with are not gonna be professional athletes. Right. But the tools that I help them, you know, use, be it meditation, awareness, all this stuff, that translates into life, like why, we use it every day as yeah. adults, right? Because the way that it applies, like awareness applies to relationships, day-to-day um, -day conversations, how you manage anxiety, how you manage uh, tasks, you how you manage time, how you manage yourself relative to time, right? For me, a big part of why I meditate every day is because I like to think that I'm working on my my mental state, right? Like mm -hmm. my presence of mind in day-to-day -day life, be it in the relationship with you or be yeah. it in the relationship with my family, with my mom and my sister. Yeah. Maybe are you hiding your hand in my pocket. <laughs> my <ankle. laughs> I think is really important, and that's um, just like being a better person. Just how can you be the best person you can possibly be? And I talk a lot with you guys about how you can't pour you can't pour from an empty cup. So in order to take care of your loved ones, in order to be um, there for other people, you have to be there for yourself. You can't give to others if you're not giving to yourself. And so I think working on your health and your mindset and your mental health, physical health makes you a better person it makes you able to show up in the world yes. um, in a way so that you can like make the world a better place and I think that's something that Gary does really well with his kids a lot of the parents when they're writing you know reviews about him say like he made my kid a better person like overall because it's not just about tennis it's like health is life and so like for meditation for me because as a coach I spend a lot of my day giving to other people it's like a good way for me to set time aside from my mind and my thoughts mm -hmm. uh, because I think that that's there's something really powerful to that just sitting yeah especially in a city environment like we mm -hmm. live in we live in New York City and there's like thousands of people out yeah, right now yeah everyone's staring at us yeah um, <laughs> it's very difficult to pause it is it, it almost feels unnatural to pause and I think that that's super, super incredible. Or are you finding a pocket again? Mm -hmm. Sorry. Super incredible to pause and just kind of let let your mind be aware of the thoughts uh, instead of you kind of like running from moment to moment, from mm -hmm. activity to activity. So what are your like top tips for managing your anxiety besides meditating? Do you have uh, routines? Routines. Right. We're, we're creatures of habit. Uh, for me, meditating in the morning. Look at the camera. Baby. Oh, sorry. I was just kind of wondering. Look, you keep pointing it down at yourself, and then no, no, at we're me, both. So in I'm it. not we're sure we're if, be, I, we're if we're I'm in habits. Walking to the sidewalk for like 20 minutes. <laughs> I'm just walking aimlessly right now. <laughs> having routines because we are creatures of habit. Having good habits. Yeah. So uh, waking up and drinking. For me, I drink three glasses of water in the morning. And oh yeah, you do that. Yes. I drink oh, three that's glasses. what that glass is. It's always next to the sink. I'm like, who's drinking water before it, like? So whether it's the weekend or it's like a Monday or a Wednesday, it doesn't matter. It's always yeah the the same kind of feeling and the same kind of self care to start the day. And you hear a lot about like morning routines being really important and really setting the tone for the day and I mean there's so many like there's so many podcasts and things about analyzing the morning routines of you know, successful people uh, CEOs um, top athletes and they pretty much what they all have in common is that to me it seems like they just all really do commit they do have like a little bit of discipline in their morning routines um, I think something that's different for women and the feminine energy because um, it's a very like masculine energy thing to have a really rigid same everyday schedule but something that I think taps into feminine energy is also just like evaluating how you feel in the morning and having a little bit more flow in your morning like if you're you know um, if you're feeling like doing certain activities in the morning over others on certain days I think it's okay to have that flexibility yeah but also just knowing when to have discipline about things like meditating or which is something I need to get better at. Yeah, well, <laughs> not you, as you, consistent as Gary. I think there's um, there's this guy that I'm a huge fan of, Jocko Willink, and he his whole shtick is discipline equals freedom. Ooh, uh, and that's so interesting. Like he he's uh, I like that. Like whatever. Mm. He's like a 
he's like a typical military badass. Okay. And, but he's like one of the most world-renowned, well-known guys because he's also a public speaker. Does a lot of stuff. He's written multiple, multiple best-selling books. Okay. And so, one My of his books tired, is sorry. one of his books is uh, you know discipline equals freedom, mm -hmm. and he's almost. Almost to the point of like I think maybe a little bit crazy like he wakes up at 4 30 every morning That's not what we should do. Yeah. Yes, that's an extreme But I think what it shows and what he talks about is like when you have discipline and when you do allocate time for Yourself mm -hmm. for the things that you need like you allocate time for family you allocate time for um, You know your nutrition you allocate time allocate time for your fitness you allocate time for work all of these things when you're disciplined about it, you actually then have more time. You don't just burn random hours of the day and then you're like, oh, I don't have time to do anything. Yeah. Right? So I think that there's a lot to be said about that. What's a good question to end on that we could both answer? When are we getting a cat? <laughs> a little bit of a life update, but Gary and I are moving into a one bedroom. We're in a studio now um, in 15 days and we're getting a cat. So get ready for cat content. A lot of it. Apparently. No, I'm not gonna do that to you guys. Cat lady. <laughs> Maybe a little. Maybe a little bit. How okay. do you manage to stay disciplined with your fitness and nutrition? Right? Like motivated? We, like we were supposed to go to Thailand this week. Yeah, we were. And both of us kinda hit a little slump last mm -hmm. or two weeks ago when we realized that we were not gonna go because mm -hmm. of the corona yeah. pandemic and uh, it hadn't been declared a pandemic yet but yeah. we, we saw a lot of uh, countries being you know put on lockdown and all this stuff travel restrictions yeah and so we both noticed that we hit a slump because we were both motivated to be in uh, in bathing suits and we were like working really <laughs> really hard true. Well, this is good learning actually it is it's not though it exactly, doesn't have to be exactly it doesn't, it doesn't have, have to for, be. for us it was like we that was a goal it's for a goal, us. It's, yeah. goal. It's, that's really important actually it's I think a really key thing that's the big thing and so it took us it took us a little bit it took us about a week both i think to bounce back from yeah. that and set a different goal and get back on track because i think i ate like two boxes of cookies <laughs> during that week something that i that I think we both do without realizing it because it's what we've done our whole lives is we're really good at setting goals, always having goals. And yeah. you can't really be motivated if you don't have something that you're working towards. It's really, really hard. It's just not practical. And I think we end up, both you and I end up having, you know, we have a lot of goals that we like internalize and it yes. becomes important to us because we're competing with ourselves, not other people. We're not trying to look or be other people. Yeah. We're just trying to be our best. I think that's also another thing. You're not comparing yourself to somebody else in the bikini or right. somebody else. You're just like, I want to feel good. I just want to feel my best. I want to feel good and yeah. how I see myself and how mm -hmm. I, and whatever it is, whatever goal you have, you, everybody has their own little journey, but it's like setting the goals gives you that little spark because uh, there's this really, really cool, uh, whatever, it's not cool, it's kind of like, whatever. <laughs> it's kind of whatever. What are you saying uh, right now? Motivation is like taking a shower. Like it's, it has to be done every day. Like you have to be motivated yeah. every day. You have to shower every day. I mean, you don't have to shower, but like it helps. <laughs> it helps to shower Tips every day. From Gary. But it's really interesting. Like you have to, you do. It's like a lifestyle and a practice more than something you just get on accident and it's like suddenly like oh it's the spur of the you know i just caught this i caught the case of motivation i'm gonna go to the gym now it's more like you cultivate it in your life you practice it by setting goals and these could be like some of the goals that we had we had you know feeling our best in our swimwear on and when we go to thailand obviously not everyone can go to thailand and we're really privileged to have the ability to do that um, but now that Thailand's off the table, we're, I don't know, Gary, what did you, how did you pivot to that? What are your new goals now? So because of the virus, yeah. my work has uh, dropped down significantly in person. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. What I decided to do is I just want to uh, get as shredded as possible. And <laughs> I have an image of what that looks like. So I that's my, that. that's what my goal is. It's good to do visualization. Yes. A little visualization for myself. Uh, okay. Did a little... Um, so you just decided, like, I want to be shredded. I just decided, and oh, this is like, gonna die. This is gonna die. Shit. Oh, okay, you well, guys, sign off. Then. That's it. My camera's gonna die. But thank you guys for tuning in. Subscribe and like this um, for Gary. <laughs> no, for for, for more content tailored to petite women. And I'll see you guys next. Look week. at that beautiful face. Huh? <laughs> Say goodbye. No, bye. <laughs>